Hello everyone, welcome to the JW Review. My name is Mike Felker, and this is the weekly podcast where we review Watchtower study articles and we compare them to what the scriptures teach. Uh, I am not a Jehovah's Witness. I am not an ex-Jehovah's Witness. Uh, I am a Christian just offering my perspective on these things. Uh, So I thank you all so much uh, for joining us and just for letting me know uh, how helpful uh, these reviews are to you. Uh, There's a lot of you who do comment, and I always appreciate your feedback. Uh, But I realize, too, there's a lot of you that just uh, can't comment uh, for various reasons. But I do know that you're out there. Uh, I know you're listening, and I I know the reasons why uh, you can't comment. Completely understandable. No problem. Uh, But if you ever want to reach out to me, there's a number of ways uh, that you can do that. Uh, One of the reasons why I do this uh, is to have uh, personal interaction with you, uh, not just to make these uh, videos and whatnot, but really just to reach out on a more uh, personal level and just to invite you uh, to reach out to me on a more uh, personal level. So if you go down to the description uh, of the video or the podcast, there's uh, several ways Uh, that you can contact me and I even realize that emailing uh, might not even be an option for you. Uh, You know the reasons why that might be. I hate that that's uh, the reality of the situation that we're in. Uh, But there's other ways to do that too. Uh, You can also reach out to me via Skype. That's one way. Uh, Or if you even want to use one of the chatting apps. Uh, like WhatsApp or one of those, uh, you can reach out to me that way. I'm completely open um, to different ways, and I, I know even those are, are a struggle for uh, for some of you. Uh, you just don't want maybe your friends or family uh, kind of knowing that you're talking to people like me, but I, I'm, I'm open to any method that you have. Uh, I really, really uh, do want to connect with you if you are interested in that. Uh, we can just have a friendly discussion. It's okay that we disagree. You can ask me questions. Uh, that's fine. Uh, because I'm going to be offering a little bit of a different perspective on these matters than what you might hear uh, from a Jehovah's Witness or an ex-Jehovah's Witness. But I can assure you of one thing. Uh, you're not going to hear a commentary or comments uh, like what I'm going to provide to you here, uh, like what you would hear in the Kingdom Hall. You're just not going to find this kind of stuff in the Kingdom Hall. And uh, believe me, I'm not telling you uh, what to think. In fact, I'm not even necessarily telling you uh, what to believe. What do I mean by that? Well, I want to teach you critical thinking skills. I want to teach you how to think. All right, how to think. That's not something that the Watchtower is going to teach you. They're not interested in teaching you uh, how to think. They want you to believe everything that they say, to not question it. You need to trust them because God and Jesus trust them. So you need to trust them also. Uh, So I'm telling you not to do that. Test everything in light of Scripture. All right, if if there's something I say or the Watchtower or someone else says that's not in line with Scripture, reject it. Reject it. All right, so uh, what I wanted to do, if you can, like, stick with me if you're new to this, watch a couple of weeks of this, and I really hope that you can glean some insights on how to apply critical thinking to the things uh, that the Watchtower says. Accept it, accept it if it's true, but reject it if it's false. All right, so this is uh, the May 2020 Watchtower Study Edition, and this is uh, this week's article, and it's the last article of uh, this month's Watchtower. Uh, the title is Show Your Appreciation for Unseen Treasures. And they cite here 2 Corinthians 4.18. Uh, It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And this is just a really interesting text to bring up. Because it does seem that the Watchtower is often focused on the things that are seen. They're highly focused on just the, the, the things that you can see that the organization is doing. Uh, but, but more than that, as far as the eternal perspective, they're obviously very focused on, on this earth. right? They're focused on this earth and what they're going to have to do on this earth. And that they are very, very 
earth focus because for uh, most Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, the paradise earth is going to be their eternal reality. So they're looking at their relationships, they're looking at everything. They're, they're looking at many things that are seen, all right, and that is their perspective, all right? And so I'm not criticizing that perspective just yet, okay? I, what I want you to do is look at this text very carefully, all right? Uh, because read on, uh, as most of you know, uh, that the original letters that Paul was writing didn't have chapter and verse divisions. So let's look on and look at some context, okay? So let's actually back up a couple of verses and look at the context. And let's look at starting in 2 Corinthians 4.16. Paul says, Therefore we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, Yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. So Paul is kind of carrying on this theme about looking at things that are unseen, the inner man. That's what really matters because, you know, you're living in your flesh, your body's decaying, your 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 body is uh, sinful flesh, things like that. For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison while we look at the things which while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal now here's the kicker for we know that if our earthly tent which is our house is torn down we have a building from god a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens for indeed in this house we groan longing to be clothed with our dwelling from heaven inasmuch as we having put it on will not be found naked for indeed while we are in this tent we groan being burdened because we do not want to be unclothed but to be clothed so that what is mortal will be swallowed up by life so do you see what's going on here is that if the watchtower doctrine is true this is talking about the anointed class so if you're one of the other sheep or the great crowd, how do you relate to this? Because the watchtower would say that, well, the things that are not seen is the fact that you're going, if you're one of the anointed class, you're going to be recreated into a spirit creature and rule and reign with Christ in heaven for all eternity. That's how they interpret uh, this passage. And so if that's the true meaning of this passage, then Paul means something very specific when he says, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, right? If that's true, that's what Paul would have in mind. So what is the watchtower asking the great crowd to glean from this as far as looking at things which are not seen? I mean, Paul has something very specific in mind if the watchtower teaching is true. Now, I don't have time here to get into my interpretation of this passage, uh, but I just want you to kind of keep this in mind. Is and This is all goes back to applying critical thinking to the things that the watchtower says to see how inconsistent they are. And this is why it's so problematic for the watchtower to be using the Christian scriptures because according to them, the Christian scriptures were written for the anointed class. And so the great crowd just has little bits and pieces uh, they can pull out. And that's why they focus so much on the Hebrew scriptures. Because, wow, the Hebrew scriptures, that's that's for the great crowd. That's for, that, that's for me. So um, let's start to like peel off the onion a little bit and look at what's underneath. All right. Uh, and look at, look at the first part of uh, paragraph one. Not all treasures can be seen. In fact, the greatest treasures are unseen. So the greatest treasures. So do we think that part of the greatest treasures is 2 Corinthians 4.18? After all, that's what the Watchtower quotes here. So you, you, when, you, when you read the key text here and you read the first sentence of the first paragraph and you look at the context of what Paul is saying, then you have in mind that the greatest treasures, among the greatest treasures, are the fact that you're going to be recreated as a spirit creature. But 
for most of you watching, if you're a Jehovah's Witness, that can't apply to you. So you will not be getting the greatest treasures if you're one of the great crowd. So let that sink in. You're not going to get the greatest treasures. Paragraph 2. The Apostle Paul urges us to keep our eyes on the things unseen. Does the Watchtower want you to keep your eyes on 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 5? But that doesn't apply to you? How does that work? These unseen things are treasures that include the blessings we enjoy in God's new world. Yet, 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 5 doesn't apply to most of you. It doesn't apply to me, right? I mean, in best case scenario, um, I would be uh, you know, resurrected onto the millennial earth and I'll have the opportunity, the thousand year opportunity to prove myself worthy. Um, but so this text doesn't apply to me, it doesn't apply to those in the new world. So why are they using this passage? Paragraph three. The greatest unseen treasure is friendship with Jehovah. And they cite here uh, Psalm 25, 14. The secret of Jehovah is for those who fear him, and he will make them know his covenant. Let's look at the next verse. My eyes are continually towards Jehovah, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. So this text doesn't actually say the greatest unseen treasure is friendship with Jehovah. It doesn't, doesn't say that. <laughs> but let's just go ahead and focus in on what the Watchtower means by friendship with uh, Jehovah. Now, you'll see this regularly emphasized by the Watchtower because uh, the Watchtower says that for most Jehovah's Witnesses, you can only be friends of God. You can't be adopted sons of God or a child of God because that is only uh, for the anointed class. You know, that, 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 that can't apply to you, right? So we can look at texts like uh, Romans 8. eight fourteen. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons, by which we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. So this can't apply to you if you're one of the great crowd, even though it says, for all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. So, are you being led by the Spirit of God? Well, then you're a son of God. I mean, that's what Paul says. That's not what I'm saying. That's what that's what Paul says. So you have to, to deny this if you're a Jehovah's Witness. All right? But they say the greatest unseen treasure is friendship with uh, Jehovah. Now, now think about this. What type of relationship is more intimate or has the potential to be more infant in uh, intimate. Let's just say that, the potential, because I know human relationships, uh, they are, are what they are, living in the sin-cursed world. But ideally, what would you rather be? Um, a friend of someone, as far as intimacy goes, or a son or a daughter, as far as intimacy goes? Which one is more intimate? I mean, think about your relationships, right? Your friends versus your children, in how you distinguish between your love. You have a greater love for your own family than the others around you, right? I mean, that's I think that's biblical to be able to distinguish the types of love you have. I mean, you love your spouse more than you love your friend, right? So think about that. Friendship with God versus a child of God. I mean, look at the intimacy described here in Romans eight fourteen through 16 about the Spirit testifying with your spirit. Those, these, these are not things that you can experience according to the Watchtower. So they're going on through this whole article talking about being friendship with God, having friendship with God, right? But that's just not the greatest treasure. The greatest treasure would be being a son of God because of the intimacy 
that you could have with God. I mean, be able to call God your father in that sense, right? Paragraph four. So not even death can separate Jehovah from his close friends. Abraham is alive in Jehovah's memory. And they cite here Luke 20, 37. It says, but the dead are raised, even Moses showed in the passage about the burning bush, where he calls the Lord the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Now, he is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for all live to him. What? Maybe I'm missing something, but where is Jehovah's memory in this passage? I'm not seeing it. What I see here is that these men are alive. That they're alive because how can God be the God of the living if they're not if they're not living? So I don't know where this uh, <laughs> Jehovah's memory is coming from. It's not coming from the text, right? Text says something different. We can be certain that Jehovah longs for the day when He will resurrect His beloved friends who have died now what's interesting here is that regardless if it whether you're a friend or not of god you could even hate god i suppose because the watchtower interprets john let's just read it john 5 29 and will come forth the resurrection those who did good deeds to a resurrection of life and those who committed evil deeds to a resurrection of judgment. Now, the Watchtower interprets this in line with Acts uh, 24, 15. It says, Having a hope in God in which these men cherish themselves, that there shall certainly be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. The righteous and the wicked. So, whether you're a friend of God or not, the Watchtower says that these ones can still be resurrected and have this thousand year opportunity to prove themselves uh, you know, worthy of eternal life, right? So these statements by, by the Watchtower are essentially meaningless because Jehovah just resurrects you know, most people, right? Unless you, uh, you know, die during the Great Tribulation or Armageddon, um, you're, you might be getting resurrected either way, whether you wanted to or not, it sounds like. All right, let's uh, go on to paragraph five. How many imperfect humans today enjoy a close relationship with Jehovah? There are millions. We know this because so many men, women, and children on earth are proving by their conduct that they want to be God's friends. Jehovah's close friendship is with the upright. This friendship is possible because of their faith in Jesus' ransom sacrifice. On that basis, Jehovah kindly allows us to dedicate ourselves to him and get baptized. When we take these important steps, we join the millions of dedicated baptized Christians who are enjoying close friendship with the greatest person in the universe. Now, this is a classic bait and switch because there is much more to this than what the Watchtower is telling you. All right? It's really not necessarily just possible to get this because you believed in Jesus, you trusted in Jesus for salvation, and that you have a close friendship with Jehovah. No, that is not enough. You've got to join this organization and this organization alone. So even if you were to uh, leave this organization or get uh, unfairly disfellowshipped or something like that, right, then you just can't have what the watchtower is telling you you can have. No matter how much you love Jesus, love Jehovah, and are obedient to him, if you are not in this organization, then this paragraph cannot be true of you. So I think it's a bit disingenuous that the watchtower would leave the, those key important details out and act like this is just about having faith and trust in Jesus. It is not. It is not. Not according to watchtower doctrine. Paragraph 7. Another unseen treasure is prayer. Close friends enjoy sharing thoughts and feelings with each other. Is that true of our relationship with Jehovah? Yes. Jehovah speaks to us through his word, and in it he reveals to us 
his thoughts and feelings. We communicate with him in prayer, and we can share with him our deepest thoughts and innermost feelings. So a couple of things here. First of all, there would be two levels of intimacy, right? If you're just a friend of God versus a, a, a son of God or a child of God, right? Shouldn't there be? If not, why not? You know, the word friend and the word a son or a child are very different things. The relationships that we understand by these terms, um, they, they mean something. So they're kind of indirectly, indirectly saying that certain Christians are going to have a much deeper and different relationship with God than everyone else. In fact, these certain ones, the anointed class, actually get to have an eternal relationship with Jesus because they're actually going to be uh, with him, present with him. And the rest of Jehovah's Witnesses are not. They're going to be on the paradise earth, doing what they do on a paradise earth. Because you know, uh, intimacy with Jesus is not something that I've ever heard Jehovah's Witnesses being excited about. It's, it doesn't even really cross their mind. But think about that in light of this paragraph. According to the Watchtower, you can't even be a friend of Jesus. If, if words have meaning, you can't be friends with Jesus because it says close friends enjoy sharing thoughts and feelings with each other. Now, we've heard the Watchtower recently say that you can't pray to Jesus. You can't communicate with Jesus because that is a form of worship, and you should only worship uh, Jehovah. So, according to the Watchtower, they're not saying this directly, but if you put the pieces together, they are saying that you can't be a friend of Jesus because friends share thoughts with each other. Friends communicate with each other. So, you can't even be a friend of Jesus, the Son of God, your Lord and your Savior, your Redeemer, you can't even be his friend, according to the Watchtower. Think about that. Think about what that means. Let's go on to paragraph 13. I think just two more paragraphs, and then we'll wrap up here. All right, paragraph 13. Before Jesus ascended to heaven, he told his disciples, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be witnesses of me to the most distant part of the earth. These words are being fulfilled in a wonderful way. With the backing of Holy Spirit, some eight and a half million worshipers of Jehovah have been gathered from every corner of the earth. Now, most Jehovah's Witnesses aren't going to pick up on this, um, but the quote here in Acts 1.8, that is from Jesus. And Jesus is saying that you will be witnesses of me. That is the directive. That is the directive. But what does this religion call themselves? Jehovah's Witnesses. They don't call themselves Jesus' Witnesses. Right? So they're leaving Jesus out of it. But Jesus is telling them, don't leave me out of it. Make me primary in your witnessing. But Jehovah's Witnesses don't do that. They make the name of Jehovah primary in their ministry. But Acts 1.8 says what it says. I didn't say it. Jesus said that. Paragraph 17. We can show our appreciation for the privilege of working together with God, Christ, and the angels. We can do so by zealously seeking opportunities to share the good news with others. Have you ever asked a Jehovah's Witness what the good news is? I really, I really think you should. I really think you should. That's something I want to do the next time I encounter one and say, Hey, excuse me, can you just share with me what the good news is? I will give you five minutes. I will not interrupt you. Show me every scripture. Tell me what you want to say. Just share with me the good news. How likely is it that if they are to share the good news they are likely to bring up 1 Corinthians 15, where the good news is actually defined. Paul says, Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel, or the good news, which I preach to you. So this is Paul saying, This is what I preach to you, which also you received, in which also you stand. 
by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Now, if he stopped there and asked the Jehovah's Witness, what do you think the good news is that Paul preached? They'd probably say something along the lines of, well, uh, Jehovah is sovereign and he is uh, going to establish his kingdom. And so we have a kingdom message that we are proclaiming that Christ is ruling and reigning and he's going to conquer his enemies, right? He's going to restore the earth. And they're going to say something along those lines. It may take a lot more time and details to elaborate on that. But how likely is it that they are going to define it in the way that Paul defines it? In verse 3, so this is the good news according to Paul. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And then Paul goes on to talk about the appearance appearances, and then he goes on to talk about uh, the resurrection. But this is the good news according to Paul, where it, it is, this is the most explicitly defined area of the good news. Now, I'm not saying the kingdom um, isn't relevant to that. Of course it is. But I can nearly guarantee you that most Jehovah's Witnesses are going to leave this part out if you allow them to define the good news to you. All right. Now, the Watchtower says there are numerous ways to do this, or share the good news, such by witnessing publicly and from house to house. Many also enjoy informal witnessing. When they meet a stranger, they greet him in a friendly manner and try to start a conversation. If the person responds favorably, they tactfully introduce the kingdom message, which more times than not is not going to include the message that Paul states here. I think that's very, very noteworthy. But what I also want to stress is that if you're going to share the good news with people, what, whatever you think that to be, um, you've got to do it the Watchtower's way or the highway. So no matter how much informal witnessing you do, whatever that means, I guess just like talking to your friends, your coworkers, right, people you see in the line waiting for groceries in the store, although during, during these days you're probably not tapping people on the shoulder and having as many conversations because we're all trying to be social distancing and all that. But, um, but besides all that, you've got to do the formal witnessing that the Watchtower wants you to do, whether that's door knocking or cart witnessing. You've got to do those. You can't leave those out. So you've got to do it the Watchtower way or it's the highway. That, that, that's just the way it is. That's not biblical, but that's just the way it is. All right, and uh, that is all we have uh, for this review. So uh, a lot of diff different things that we discuss, but just think about um, being a friend of God versus a child of God and really search the scriptures, okay? Really look at it objectively. Just take off your watchtower glasses for a minute and read the scriptures and test what the watchtower says in light of the scriptures. So, I don't know what next month's Watchtower is like, but uh, if you would like to see me discuss a particular uh, topic, please send me an article to review. I really want to make this more article reviewing, right, than strictly a topical, because I really want to be able to view uh, the Watchtower's words in context. So, if you have something you want me to look at and review here, I'm happy to do that, but please send me an article uh, to review. So um, I think that is all I have uh, for this week. So I thank you all so much for watching, for joining me. Just remember, uh, there's multiple outlets for uh, you know, listening to this podcast. Of course, I'm here on YouTube. I'm also on Apple Podcasts. So you can do that there. You can go to michaeljfelker.com. I'm always posting uh, the audio and the video there. And there's a lot more on my website that you all uh, can look at. Uh, there's uh, discussions, debates, there's uh, written articles and things like that. So I uh, hope you all have a great week and we will see you next time. For more information about Jehovah's Witnesses and other topics, please visit michaeljfelker.com. There you can also reach me directly to submit questions or comments to be covered on the JW Review. To subscribe to this podcast, please go to iTunes and search for the JW Review.